Um, are you a science fiction fan? Oh, definitely. I am a science fiction fan. So we often hear that today's leading innovators were inspired by science fiction. Has yeah. there been a book or a film or a TV show that in, has inspired you in some way? And tell us about it. Yeah, so I, um, <clears throat> I think there is, there is this very, very clear distinction between Hollywood and books in terms of science fiction. Uh, Hollywood is almost always bad, like really, really bad in terms of story. Not in terms of special effects or compelling or how emotionally involved you are, but just about the story. Like the most uninspiring, stupid, uh, mind-reducing stories about the future where it, it's, it's a lot easier to uh, imagine the total collapse of all civilization and the destruction and the extinction of life on Earth than it is to imagine a slight change in capitalism. <laughs> and that's what Hollywood, Hollywood perpetrates. There is never any change in the structure of capitalism with few rare excep exceptions such as um, Star Trek. But they don't show the transition. They just say, oh, we don't use money anymore and it's a reputation economy or whatever. But they don't say how. But in, in, in science fiction books, you can find some of that. And, uh, and I like how, how the, the, the progression explained in some of these stories um, is, is portrayed. For example, uh, Down and Out in Magic Kingdom uh, by Cory Doctorow uh, and, uh, and other authors like him, um, uh, Werner Vinge, uh, Strauss. But the, um, the book that actually uh, resonated with me the most is a very, very old book, The, the, um, the Foundation Trilogy by Isaac Asimov. Which, you know, the, the idea of psychohistory might not have been perfectly um, sound scientifically, but it does help you think about systems and cycles of civilizations. Um, and I think we have a tendency to believe that, you know, somehow our civilization, current society is so much different from the past and it has, bears no resemblance. But in fact, it is very, very similar to everything that we've seen and big, big societies and empires, they have collapsed regularly in just a period of a few hundred years. So, yeah, keep that in mind. Um, is there anything about Star Trek in particular that uh, has inspired you? At, at the level of the technology, there was nothing that really struck me in, uh, in Star Trek. Um, well, maybe because I, I've watched it when I was already, you know, some 18 or 20, and uh, so it was already in the 2000 and something. Um, but the... Um, uh, the, the sociological aspect, so the fact that uh, it did, there was no money, essentially. I mean, that is the, 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 the most outlandish idea uh, compared to every single other p uh, piece of uh, science fiction, uh, in, in mainstream at least. Um, and so to me, like, building a society that doesn't require monetary exchange, or it's not, maybe, maybe it has, but it doesn't rely on it, uh, as a means for people to, con to conduct their business and their lives, it means that their, their, their worth is elsewhere. And that usually is like how impactful they are in what they're doing and how meaningful is their existence. I think that's what we should be striving for and really decouple income and work because those two things, they were combined before because it made sense evolutionarily speaking. But once you reach a certain level of technological development, I think it makes sense to decouple them they are a more balanced society because they have made that cultural shift. Uh, so still far from Star Trek, but as close to Star Trek as they can get on this planet right now. So if, if more countries were more...